ocean calls us to her. Feel her reach out and touch you, draw you in. Watch as the waves cover, uncover, tell the wind. Breathe. Breathe deeply to the rhythm of the sea. A rhythm deep as oceans floor. A rhythm high as thighs ceiling. Constant as water in Earth's veins. Breathing deeply. The breath I breathe is the same breath that yesterday touched the nose of the AP 40. This breath is the same breath that now sails the back of the wind. Tomorrow, my child, you too shall breathe the same breath. Breathe deep. Tossed and turned. Molded and remolded. Wind and wave broken. Becoming sand of the earth. Forming new lands. Here I am and I breathe. burst into song of the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here It's a joy to be intimate to love. But somehow alongside that love comes fear. There's a lurking doubt of whether I really belong. There's a conflicting voice saying, who do you think you are, God's gift to the world? Throughout my life, I tried to earn that gift, to earn that welcome, to prove my worth, and convince the world that I'm good enough to be a part of it. By the age of 37, I've become a PhD, and I'm many jobs out here. I love the work. It feels purposeful but the nagging sense that it isn't enough, and the stirrings of the same scattered confusion I felt before are still with me. I find a London garden cottage, and the walls call for color and art. I have the audacious idea that I could be the one to make the art. So taking a deep breath, I purchase art supplies, and what seems like a giant canvas. I hang the canvas on the wall of my office for all to see as an act of inspiration, determined to actually complete this intended creation. The blank canvas hangs there for months. More than once I hear the comment, oh my, what an interesting artistic statement. <laughs> I love and nod grimly, hoping that the idea of what the canvas needs will come and that somehow I'll be able to capture the idea that rises. Around the same time, a strange and disconcerting thing goes on. I hear a voice that's calling me name. It calls me a name that reveals a new deep and unknown shadow. The voice makes me feel Makes me want to retreat into myself and disappear. You're a beached whale. Beached whale. You're a beached, You're a beached whale. whale, says the voice. You're a beached whale. I try to You're silence it. Whale. And when that doesn't work, I aim to drown it out. Whale. I look for assurance from the people around me. Whale. My friends. Whale. My family. My patients. You're a beached whale. Turning up the volume on their voice whale. helps me away. You're a beached whale. This voice is still there. A in presence calling me a beach whale. You're a beach whale. I ask another tool for help. And through our work, I am that something. I am a beach whale. I'm so stuck in uncertainty and unknown, held captive in my voice and my mind and my body for reasons I 
still don't know. But I know now what the canvas needs. The canvas needs what a beach whale needs. She needs to get back to the water. She needs to be lifted from the shore and carried back to the sea, just like I need something to buoy me and lift my spirit from this stuck place that holds me trapped in here. That day, on the canvas, I sketch a woman standing in a tree looking out to sea. And there on the horizon is a whale breaching, set free. sketch remains unchanged for another month or so. I don't know what to do next. I've purchased paints and brushes, but I have no time for training. So I wait. Until the idea of collage comes to me. I don't know how to paint, but I can piece together paint. This is that piece. It's called Off the Shore. But getting off the shore doesn't come as easily as it may seem. I decided to use the moon cycle to schedule time to create. So with each full and new moon, collage begins to fill the canvas. First comes the sky then the sea and the shore. I couldn't put that word. It's peaceful. I feel a satisfied calm, a growing confidence that this is good. And then it's time for the rain. Over all my travels, I've gathered scraps and images along the way and stowed them for the day I find use for them. Now I take the pages I had saved, begin to pull them apart and put them back together. I see the patterns connect, spiraling tree branches align with the roof line of a temple. A circle of women gather around the table. A monk climbs the stairs as travelers descend to meet him. A frenzy overtakes me as I piece images together. As though driven by some unseen force, I see the flow form so naturally from one image of human interaction and connection merging with the next. When I finally pause, it's as though I'm stepping out of a trance. I step back to look at my work, and everything changes before my eyes. The land begins to spin. Where, where before there had been connection, there's now chaos and overwhelm. Instead of the beautiful calm and peacefulness I felt before, now all I can feel is the certainty that I've written everything. I drive home that feeling of panic and dread, shallow breath, pounding heart. I try to think of how to hide what I've done, to undo the mistake, desperate to salvage the wreck, fearful that it's all a waste. I'm going around and around in circles. Even though I'm surrounded by thoughts and piles I knew they could Did you go? 
recognize the feelings of panic and dread at this moment. I wait and listen for my mother to hear. Allow the chaos to calm and slowly the voice will come with the final pieces together. Three trees of wood, stone, and metal. A bell of mindfulness at the center of which. Two eagles gripped in their fatal flight. And a hand reaching out to her. What I learned through the making of Off the Shore is that here in a land of human interaction and connectedness is where I become stuck. Unable to stand fully in the beauty and joy of being alive. This is where I become beached. Here, surrounded by my own beloved community, I find myself alone. In the making of this collage, I recognize that within the need to free myself from the shore is also a need to understand more fully why I become call to see the woman and what brings her to the shore. That call leads to the making of the second piece called Into the Deep. My process of creating changes between the making of Off the Shore and Into the Deep. With Off the Shore, I knew the essence and the intent of what I wanted to make. With Into the Deep, all I know is that this is an exploration, a revelation. I am in a state of pure discovery, and I do not know what I will find. But I know what I'm called to do. The call to go to the deepest and darkest part of myself repeats again and again. Now a call to explore and reveal on a canvas the deepest and darkest part of myself is not something to take lightly. <laughs> this is what I've avoided and resisted and hidden from even myself. I know I can't ignore the call, but I'm afraid of what I will find. When I make these collages, I, I don't know what will appear on the canvas. I don't know any of that anyway. Instead, I follow an intuitive process. I ask a question then set an intention and allow the unfolding of what becomes the answer or the insight. I usually begin with a meditation and a time of clearing the inner cacophony before I begin the work of creation. This is a spiritual process. Each piece has a prayer, a conversation between myself and the divine, which is why it is strange that my call is to where I feel an unknown terror lurking as though there's a shadow that plays in the light of my heart. Because I leverage the moon cycle, carving out time to create with each full and new moon, each piece takes months to complete. With the first moon comes the longer to exploring the caverns of the hidden underworld. Above is a church cast in shadow a cross wrapped in barbed wire, and a graveyard. Out of the graveyard, parrots of glowing green take flight into a stormy night sky. And far across the canvas on the horizon line, a whale and a diver meet over the deep. Along with paper and glue, I create word and sound as well. During the month of working into the deep, a series of poetry and songs come like gifts that float up and out of me, nearly fully formed and thankfully caught in the net of the recording app on my phone. The strange and awkward thing about these words from my deep is that they have been writing for my dead, my lost, depression, and even suicide. But it's not exactly the kind of material you bring to share at a party. It is 
of speech need to be spoken and sung. I just don't know how to share them or what they even mean for me. I'm standing on the precipice, some part of me begging to be set free, but but free from what? Why is this message coming from me? What am I even doing here? You're not the boss of me. I'm the boss. I want to decide for myself. I want to choose. Stop telling me what to do. I've got this under control. What should we say? We need you to decide. Just tell us what you want. Won't you just choose? Whoa, don't ask me to decide. I don't want to choose. Make up your own mind. You go with the flow. I am the boss. Okay. You go with the flow and I'll be here and you don't worry about it. I'll get on the other end of you any day. It's over now. I've said them all. Wait a minute. You did what? How could you choose that? If you don't know better than that, we have a problem. Problem, problem, problem. problem. Houston, we have a problem. Mind control to Major Tom. Mind control to Major Craig. Mind control to Major Jenna. I'm the Major. Everyone should listen to me. Read my mind. Mind control. Mind control. I control. Why control? There's no control. I don't know what to do, and neither do you. How can we know? We're both on eggshells, just turning around me. Who knows what's next? I might be fine, or I might not. Who knows? Not me. I need you to know me well enough to know what I want and need so I can be in control. Fix me, heal me, help me, forgive me, love me, support me, hold me, know me, know me, know me. There's no me. Who am I? Where am I? What am I? <laughs> There's a voice for all these years haunting me. Haunting me. Calling me away at each last show. I'm ashamed of calling me. Turn away and hide my feet from the fire. Please. Forgive me. Forgive me. That's why I'm there and I'm saved. Listen. No, she called me too. I feel her reach out and touch me, drawing me in. Oh, great ocean, you to carry me to the depths of your sea. I will go. I feel the force of you are near, beckoning, reckoning to drown, absorbing. I shiver on the shores of sand, naked under moonlight, foolish on the beach, whale far from the sea, clinging heavy to dry and land. Ocean calls me to you. I feel her reach out and touch me, drawing me in. Oh, great ocean, lift and carry me to the depths of your sea. I can hear the voice inside. I am the major. 
will stream down the shore. Water's locked in my side. Cool my belly. Stir this hulking mass. The ocean calls me to her. I feel her reach out and touch me, drawing me in. Oh, great ocean, lift me up. Draw me in. Draw me in where I can swim, free to roam, to sing, to dive in your depths, to swim with my kids. We'll sing the great harmonies. Lift me up. Draw me in. She wakes into the same body, and the dreams play again and again. Shame, she survived, she still has a life. She says, I survived. I breathe. 
the wit so tiny till she of antiquity. I encounter the hidden self actively choosing whether to live or leave my life. There's so much I still don't understand, and it may take a hundred more moon cycles to unravel the twisting confusion woven deep inside of me. But what I do know is that by allowing my cry for mercy to have a voice, this beached part of me that's been dying now wants to find a way to live. Throughout my life, I've worn many masks, not on purpose or to deceive anyone, but trying to get at what I want out of myself. In this collage is a fire that melts the frigid underworld. The fuel for the fire is a mask, torn apart and burned. The melted snow and ice put a fire within itself. I turn my cycle out of the deep and around and through everything. And over all is the cosmos. Courage gained by facing my deepest and darkest self. I determined to set myself free. This piece is called Emergence. And I begin this canvas with a new feeling of confidence and determination that can only come from facing one's fears. I'm sure the time is coming for me at last to emerge as my true self, for the beached whale to become free from the shore and unrestrained, uncontained. On the canvas, I boldly write the words, emergence, tearing into newness, tumbling into flight, learning who and how to be. From darkness comes new sight. With certainty, I begin the process, meditation and clearing, the gathering of pages, and then tearing and gluing, allowing the unfolding of what will be. <laughs> I don't expect what comes first. <laughs> Clear-cut deforestation. Mountains carved apart by lions, and a woman walking alone in an empty desert void of land. I had been expecting butterflies, not destruction and death. <laughs> Before 
butterflies do appear on this canvas, first come the bees. And then a burst of colorful green that spreads from the center out along the edges of the structure, bringing life back to the forest, reviving a living world, transforming and reclaiming burgeoning life. As the cycle of life builds the canvas, another horizon begins to emerge. And I feel the need to turn everything upside down. Here is the whale, reaching, touching the beak of this bird perched in a tree, waiting to take flight. But before I let you fly, I have one more story to tell you about this boat and its adventure. During the months of work on Emergence, I attend a shamanic journey with another local healer. This is a 45-minute drum-induced vision quest. No drugs involved. I travel to this, and I find myself on the shore of the ocean yet again. This time, boat made for blood is waiting and carries me across the ocean as though propelled by an unseen force toward an island with a tall tower. When the boat reaches the island, I secure it, enter the tower, climb a spiral staircase high above the clouds, and enter a realm of pure light, full of absolute goodness, kindness, and wisdom. I ask the, uh, the beings of this higher realm if they could show me what I need to know to best live my life. And a scroll appears with a quill beginning to get out. As I strain to see what is written, the scroll is whisked away, and I'm told that it's time to leave. I resist, desperate to see what was written on the scroll, sure it contained what I need to know to best live my life. In answer to my resistance, I ushered out and tossed down the stairs. I fall head over heels, tumbling over and over and down and down. My body is braced, ready for impact, anticipating pain. After an eternity of falling, I realize there is no impact, and only the pain of my own resistance. I relax and soften. Light beings are still with me, catching me even as I fall. As this dawns on me, they stand me at their feet, and I ask if they would stay. They agree, and we descend together, emerging into sunlight. I stride across the grass toward the dock. When I'm struck by the fact that the boat was only one. There can't be room for all of us. The only choice I could see is to let my new friends go ahead without me. I stagger at the thought of being left behind and losing all that I love and cherish. But a voice whispers, Beloved, this boat is made for you. You can invite whoever you want to come with you, but there will always be room for you because this boat is made for you. This boat is made for you. This boat is made for you. Wow. Years ago, to build a community that would be a place of healing for us both in our heads and around and between us. I keep looking for the crew that will tell me I'm ready, that I'm finally good enough to make this world a better place. What I've learned through the making of emergence relates back to that first question of the night. Who do you think you are, God's gift to the world? I thought the obvious answer would be, well, yes, of course. Who else could I be? Who 
what I've realized is that I'm trying to answer the wrong question. The question isn't if you or I are a gift. Because of course. The real question is whether we will receive the gift being given to us. It doesn't matter how hard I try to be a gift to the world. If I can't first receive the gift of my life by staying and living. The truth is that I need to know. There's no better version of me out there that can replace this one. The best me is the one right here, living this life, figuring it out step by step before your very eyes. I'm growing the courage and the capacity for what comes next. And here we are in this community. The one that's already here. I'm already part of it. And so are you. I may be the whale and the one. We may each be stranded on the shore swimming in the sea and living on the land from one moment to the next in a continuous process of emergence. And may each moment be filled with joyful excitement for what is here and now and future. To close our time together, I want to share one final song with you. The song is called Enoch Strand. And it comes from another vision that was shared with me by another peer. The vision was so beautiful and compelling that I had to write this song. I'm going to ask my friend Garth Powell if he'll come forward and accompany me. Garth is an improvisational jazz music, uh, percussionist, and he will be accompanying on our call. I hope this song blesses you as it has blessed me. At dark of midnight, my eyes cleave, and for the first time, I see stars. You know, I can